Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be swatching my new gouache. So these are some gouache paints I got from St. Louis Art Supply. Here I am in just like my everyday watercolor sketchbook. I'm going to start off with using just the pure pigments and see how opaque they are and then add some water to uh, thin them down to see how light they get with just water for transparency. It's kind of like what I do with my watercolors. So that was a yellow ochre and burnt sienna. And now I'm gonna mix some of my burnt sienna with my Delft blue. So it's like the darkest blue I have. So my idea is that I'm gonna do like a 50-50 mix and then do some with more brown and some with more blue and kind of see like what colors I can make. And this is actually like the first time I've really worked with gouache, like intentionally, like I use gouache a little bit when I did art school with the figure drawing classes we did. We all asked if we could like play more around with gouache and watercolors. I did more of the watercolors cause I learned watercolors many years before attending art college. So I was comfortable using those. That there is my um, Helio Turquoise. So some of these colors are, are really new to me. Uh, it's really exciting to play around with new materials. I haven't really played around with new materials in a while since art school. I graduated in 2012 with my Bachelor's of Fine Arts and Craft from the Oregon College of Art and Craft in Portland. Um, since then, unfortunately, the school has been bankrupt and it no longer exists. So I haven't really taken any like fun, like figuring out different art mediums since the school closed. And this is my lemon yellow. Pulling some gouache out onto the little top of this like traveling palette. So there's like a piece of silicone that's fitted to go on top of the wells. And so it keeps my gouache um, nice and moist. And so it's like, it's almost like it's still like straight out of the tube, which is really nice for gouache because um, gouache is an opaque medium. Unlike watercolors is a transparent medium. Um, gouache, you can water, water it down like watercolors, but ideally you want to use it kind of like straight out of a tube, like you would for like acrylic paint. And that way you can do like opaque layers, but you can also water it down. So you can really just use, um, watercolor and layers with gouache. So you do like your watercolor layer first, and then you can add your gouache in opaque layers over that. So that's a really fun way to, um, use couple different mediums together. So I'm just mixing my Helio turquoise with my lemon yellow to see what colors I can get, all the layering of the colors. Um, I haven't added any white to any of these swatches. Like I said, it's my first time swatching. Um, I didn't really have much many colors is just like playing around working with all these colors and now I'm like oh yeah I should probably write the names down so I can remember them so just making little notes of the uh, colors and the swatch um, combinations that I did So I have this, um, this green color that I have. It's actually an M. Graham and Co. gouache that I had laying around. So it must have been one of the colors I had when I was in school because I don't remember buying it after school. And so I wanted to see what that looked like along with my lemon yellow to see what, what color variations I could get. So on this page on the right, it, they're all very like really vibrant colors, which really isn't like my normal style, but I'm really not opposed to trying different things, obviously. Um, gouache, adding that in. Gouache is really similar to watercolor, so it's not like a giant leap like 
jumping into oils, which I have done before. Um, it was really nice in art school or even community college. Um, played around with all different art mediums. And so I learned a lot about like what I liked, didn't like, what's what one medium really does well over another. And I really like watercolors, how the colors can blend pretty seamlessly with um, less effort than probably using oil or acrylic. And that uh, watercolors can be really um, spontaneous and they just react to like the different amount of water around them and pigments and different colors. And so I really liked that. So on this left side of the page, I'm doing a lot of yellow ochre with some of the other colors. So this is just mixing in with my burnt sienna just to see what, um, what varies of like a brown gold I can create. I really like my browns because I like to paint horses a lot. So I'm just getting all the swatches in there. Making little notes, what colors I used. And now I'm going to clean out the top of this palette because these are all like really like vibrant greens. And I wanted to try something a little bit different for the rest of my swatching area. I'm adding white. Because I'm like, okay, I need, to, I need to tone down these colors a little bit. So I've got some um, yellow ochre and then the lemon yellow and white. And so I'm throwing some of my helio turquoise on there. And here's my brush. And I'm going to do some mixing with my brush. Just doing like some lighter colors, see if I can get some really pretty like neutral greens. Um, I really like this this row here that I'm making because they're like really soft, neutral, kind of pastel colors. Because I like to do landscapes a lot too. And I was doing these swatches in preparation for a um, road trip I took with my family. Uh, we went to Utah to check out uh, Moab. So it was like um, Needles uh, National Park and Arches National Park. And as I was, as I was swatching these, I'm like, I don't have like a red, like if if you've ever seen photos of like Arches National Park and all the um, red rock there, I was like swatching these and I'm like, I don't have a really good red to use to paint the landscape there. So after this little swatching session, I went to my local art store instead of ordering online because I didn't really have enough time to wait for shipping, honestly. And so I went and just got like... Um, a primary red. I think it was like napful or something like that. And gouache from M. Graham and Co. But I really like some of these colors. Some of them are a little bit on the bright side and then some of them are nice and um, muted, soft neutrals for like landscapes and stuff that I really liked. Making more little color notes. Like what colors I used. So now I'm grabbing my Delf Blue and I'm mixing it with my um, yellow ochre color. I really like this row that I'm creating right here. I could imagine like in a forest or even like the high desert with like sagebrush and then with some pine trees mixed in with it too. It's like that dusty, earthy greens. I'm 
just mixing a little bit more blue in with that, see what ranges I can get with those colors. So when you're like creating your own um, limited palette, so limited palette has not a lot of colors. Um, it's when you're choosing, it's really good to do some swatching. That way you know your range of colors that you can and cannot create. So that's why I was doing this as well. Like, okay, this told me I didn't have a good red. The, I thought the burnt sienna might be good enough. No, it, it really wasn't good enough for doing red rocks and stuff. And I didn't get any videos of me painting um, the rocks because I have a three-year-old daughter during that road trip. And um, she took a lot of uh, attention because she is very active. But we had a fun trip and I did some paintings in the camping trailer that my parents were letting us stay in. So I hope you liked watching this video of me just doing swatches and then kind of seeing all the colors. And if you like this, make sure you like the video. And if you want to see more of me painting in gouache and or watercolor, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks so much.